You, you married at what age? Exactly. 20, barely 20. I barely 20. Really still 19 mm -hmm. to myself anyway. I, I was hoping you'd tell me why I did that. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Nancy Sinatra's life was far from a simple melody. Born in 1940, before her father Frank Sinatra became an icon, Nancy's beginnings were modest. As Frank's fame soared in the late 40s, so did the fortunes of the Sinatra family, yet the glittering life of stardom was not without its shadows. With her father's celebrity status, Nancy's world transformed dramatically. She became a beacon for the public eye, drawing curiosity from fans and the media who often hovered around the Sinatra household. The family's privacy was compromised to such an extent that they uprooted to Los Angeles, perhaps influencing Frank Sinatra's unusual aspirations for his daughter. Despite the spotlight, Nancy nurtured a passion for the performing arts, indulging in voice and dance lessons during her youth. Her father, however, was less than enthusiastic. He knew the inevitable comparisons that would be drawn between their careers and advised her to steer clear of the music industry. Nancy, determined to forge her own path, chose to ignore his counsel. Raised in a conservative household, Nancy's teenage years were spent with organizations like the Young Women's Christian Association, and her college days began at UCLA, majoring in music. This, however, was a short-lived venture. Within a year, she left academia, ready to sparkle on a different stage. Nancy's first taste of the limelight was on her father's television show in a segment celebrating Elvis Presley's return from military service. Yet her subsequent attempts to capture the hearts of the American audience with her music initially missed the mark. Despite finding some success overseas, her early records didn't resonate in the U.S. and her public persona struggled to shine. But Nancy wasn't one to give up easily, and this was just the prelude to a career that would eventually find its own rhythm. In the swinging 60s, being the good girl didn't exactly put Nancy Sinatra on the pop culture map. Her early music, with its sweet tones and her wholesome image, didn't turn heads or ears. Yet she caught the eye of Tommy Sands, another singer at a Christmas bash. They started as friends and after a heartfelt courtship tied the knot in 1960. However, it wasn't all fairy tale romance for Nancy. Their marriage had a practical side, especially given her traditional values that called for celibacy until marriage. Nancy's personal life was soon overshadowed by a harrowing event when her younger brother was kidnapped in 1963. The family was shaken, but after a tense two days and a hefty ransom, he was safely returned. Throughout this ordeal, Nancy stayed focused on her career, even as her marriage showed signs of strain. Indeed, Nancy's relationship with Sands was more of a quiet chapter than a headline-grabbing saga. Without much fanfare, they parted ways five years later, and Nancy faced the possibility of her music career ending as her label considered dropping her due to a string of unsuccessful releases. Enter Lee Hazelwood, a producer and musician who was about to remix Nancy's life. He challenged her to lower her vocal pitch, to sing with the world weariness of someone who'd lived a little. You've been married and divorced. You should sing like that, he told her. It was a bold new direction, far from her girl next door beginnings. Along with this vocal transformation, Nancy revamped her image. She traded her natural brunette locks for a bold blonde look inspired by Marilyn Monroe. A trip to London sparked a fashion revelation and soon she was rocking mini skirts and high boots, a style that became her signature. Then came the magic ingredient. These boots are made for walking in 1966. This single, created with Hazelwood, was a smash hit, reaching the pinnacle of charts in the US and UK and making Nancy a household name. But with fame came the critics. Despite her success, many in the industry couldn't see past her lineage, presuming she rode her father's coattails to stardom. Some even blatantly snubbed her, not willing to acknowledge her talent stood on its own. Nancy Sinatra's rise to fame came at a time when women had to push harder to match their male peers' success, regardless of their undeniable talents. Even at the height of her career, fellow female icons like Sheryl Crow and Stevie Nicks seemed to keep their distance at social gatherings. But Nancy didn't just face exclusion in the celebrity social scene. While other celebrity offspring were making headlines for scandalous behavior, Nancy kept a clean slate. She steered clear of the substances that were often part and parcel of the rock and roll lifestyle offered to her by peers, a wise choice that allowed her to seize upcoming opportunities. As the Vietnam War unfolded, unlike many artists who stayed away in protest, Nancy took a different stand. She brought her music and charm to the troops, performing live in the field. Her presence was more than just a morale booster. She became a beloved pinup among the GIs, her image synonymous with the allure of home. Back stateside, Nancy was navigating another kind of minefield, the politics of gender. 
partnering with Lee Hazelwood, she lent her voice to songs traditionally sung by men, stirring up controversy at a time when the feminist movement was gaining momentum. She wasn't trying to make a statement, but her music resonated with the cultural shifts of the era. In 1967, she pushed boundaries even further with her TV special, Movin' with Nancy. But it wasn't just the music video-esque format that made waves. During a performance with Sammy Davis Jr., Nancy shared an impromptu kiss with him, sparking a backlash due to the racial tensions of the time. The kiss was one of television's first interracial displays of affection, and despite the controversy, it became a historic TV moment. Controversy seemed to follow Nancy even when she sang Something Stupid, a duet with her father. The romantic undertones of the song didn't sit well with the, the old days. audience when um, father I was happy when it was gone. However, the song's success was undeterred by the gossip. Transitioning to acting, Nancy starred in Speedway alongside Elvis Presley in 1968. Their on-screen kiss fueled rumors given Elvis's heartthrob status. But for Nancy, it was all part of the show. Another day in the life of a star constantly under the microscope for her choices and her company. Amid a whirlwind of rumors, the bond between Elvis and Sinatra was the talk of the town. They both played coy, denying a relationship, yet admitting there was definitely some flirting happening while co-starring in a film. Sinatra even went on record to compliment Elvis's kissing prowess, hinting at more than just a professional rapport. Sinatra's career was on fire, with hit after hit gracing the top ten charts. Her collaborations with producer Hazelwood sizzled with a different kind of electricity. Sinatra herself admitted to the passionate energy that crackled through their studio sessions. But just as their professional partnership seemed unbreakable, Hazelwood made an unexpected exit, relocating to Sweden and leaving Sinatra to handle the emotional aftermath alone. Despite the tumult with Hazelwood, Sinatra's heart found a new rhythm with Hugh Lambert, a Broadway choreographer. The details of how their romance sparked are scarce. But whatever happened, it was enough to capture Sinatra's heart entirely. By 1972, Sinatra had dazzled the world with a string of hits, including the iconic These Boots Are Made For Walkin'. Fans eagerly awaited her next move, but Sinatra chose a path less predictable. She turned the spotlight off herself and onto her new life with Lambert. Together, they focused on family, welcoming two children, and enjoying a period of contentment away from the media's glare. Life with Lambert was a harmonious chapter for Sinatra, devoid of scandal until a profound loss struck. Lambert's battle with cancer ended in 1985. His passing left Sinatra heartbroken, yet her spirit and love for music endured. Returning to the industry was an uphill climb, but Sinatra's passion for music couldn't be muted forever. She began to find her way back, ready to step into the light once more, showing the resilience of both her spirit and her enduring talent. Sinatra's two-decade retreat into family life was a quiet interlude, but when she stepped back into the limelight in the 90s, the music scene was a whole new world. Age is just a number, they say, and Sinatra in her 50s was ready to prove it with a bang. The year was 1995, and an offer landed on Sinatra's lap that would require more than just her vocal talents, a photo shoot for an adult magazine that promised to unveil more than her singing chops. Unsure, she sought advice from a surprising confidant, her father. His advice? He not only gave her the thumbs up, but told her to double down on the asking price. Sinatra took the plunge, securing not just the spread, but the magazine's cover as well. It sparked whispers and turned heads. Not everyone was on board with the bold move, especially given her age and faith. But Sinatra was playing her own tune, and while some critics turned up their noses, she achieved exactly what she set out to do. That Playboy controversy? It was the buzz that Sinatra needed to swing open the doors back to her musical roots. In the same year, she crossed paths with Morrissey, and together they crafted Let Me Kiss You, which hit the airwaves in 2004. Sinatra was making waves again, yet shadows from her past were never too far behind. Speaking of the past, Hazelwood, Sinatra's long-lost producer, chose this moment to re-enter the scene. Remember him? The one who vanished mid-album all those years ago. His return was as mysterious as his departure, and while everyone expected some grand confession, it never came. The reasons behind Hazelwood's abrupt exit were as murky as ever. Was it tax evasion or a bid to save his son from the draft? The truth remained locked away, but Sinatra was willing to let bygones be bygones. They picked up where they left off, touring and reviving their classic duets well into the 2000s. But life had a cruel twist in store. During the tour, Hazelwood shared devastating news in the secrecy of the dressing room. He was battling cancer. His journey ended in 2007, leaving Sinatra to navigate the loss of her longtime collaborator and friend. 
Through it all, Sinatra's comeback was as unconventional as they come, marked by resilience and a determination to sing her song her way. Nancy Sinatra's music career saw a resurgence as she stepped into the 2010 S. It wasn't the chart-topping era of her younger days, but she made her mark by releasing new tunes and reviving classic hits. It was a sweet melody of success, but not all was smooth in Sinatra's world, especially with the political climate heating up towards the end of the decade. The 2016 U.S. presidential election was a whirlwind, splitting the nation and drawing everyone, including celebrities, into the fray. Sinatra didn't hold back, openly sharing her distaste for Donald Trump, fueled by a personal incident from the early 90s. Frank Sinatra had a performance fallout with Trump, leaving a sour note that lingered for years. Trump's use of My Way at his inauguration sparked a fiery tweet from Nancy, a jab reminding everyone of the song's opening line, hinting at the end. She later revealed that the song wasn't a favorite for her or her father, but Trump's use of it certainly didn't help matters. Nancy took her disdain a step further, choosing not to utter Trump's name during interviews, a silent protest against what she saw as a dissonant turn in American politics. Her sentiment ran deep, struggling to forgive those who supported him. Her outspoken nature wasn't limited to just one issue. In the wake of the George Floyd case, Sinatra aligned herself with the Black Lives Matter movement, expressing a desire to march in solidarity, showing that her spirit remained as fervent as ever. With the support of her daughters, Sinatra shifted focus to cementing her musical legacy, ensuring her classics resonate with new generations. And while she's been open about her life's lessons, advising against young marriage and promoting careful consideration for life's opportunities, her words carry a mix of wisdom and wit. Sinatra has lived a life rich in experiences, and while she warns against the haste of youth, she embraces the idea of fully exploring life's possibilities. Her journey has been as multifaceted as her advice, spicy, sincere, and always unapologetically Sinatra.